What's going on guys? Blue Knight here. Today I'm going to teach you how to solo the Grandmaster Nightfall, uh, the Lake of Shadows. So real quick, let's go ahead and go over the build. We're going to be using Strand, the only alt that we've got, Healing Rift, Burst Glide, Arcane Needle, Grapple. This is very important because in order to do the uh, the Tormentor skip, you either have to have Strand Grapple or a... Warlock with Heat Rises on a Solar subclass. Uh, that's the only ways that you can do the Tormentor skip. Weaver's Call, because we are using Swarmers, we're going to be doing Threadlings a bunch. And then the Wanderer Tangles will suspend and create Threadlings. Uh, once again, Threadling build. And Suspend is going to help with the Unstop Champs. Looking at this Threat of Evolution, Threadlings deal more damage and travel farther. Threadling build. Landing rapid precision hits emits a severing burst from the targets. That's going to play into the um, the seasonal artifact. Threat of continuity, suspend, unravel, and sever effects applied to targets have increased duration. So everything that I do increases their duration. And then uh, dealing damage to an enemy generates grenade energy. I know that it's just a grapple, but grapple can be pretty um, pretty amazing. So let's go ahead and go over the left side here. We're using Revision Zero. Uh, it's an intrinsically anti-barrier pulse rifle that does like 30k a shot if using Hunter's Trace, uh, which is you build targeting targeting data um, and by hitting precision shots, and then you can alternate fire modes to shoot a high power ammunition with four times the charm you get four rounds if you get all four precisions there it's going to give you two more rounds um and then let's see here looking at the bow this is actually one of the bows that i got from doing the nightfall and i'm ex extremely excited to get this one it's got archer's tempo and shoot to loot as well as explosive head it's got a stability master work i don't really care about stability stability but it's got an 85 accuracy which is uh what i care about and impact um and then we're using doom petitioner if you've got Cataclysm or Briar's Contempt, that would be a better option for this, but because just because Solar, uh, they just do amazing damage. But this does really good damage. We're using Reconstruction and Precision Instrument um, with the boss spec. Looking at our artifact, honestly, the things that matter are if you're doing the solo, obviously solo operative, um, wish into being... When our super's nearly full ability, final blow spot on our orb of power. Uh, that'll be great. From whence you came, we are going to be going up against taken combatants, so that's going to be good to have. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else here. You need unstoppable bow if you're going to be using a bow. So how everything plays, rapid solar precision hits and rapid solar weapon final blows grant radiant. And then torch while radiant deal increased weapon damage to combatants affected by strand. So we can, we can become radiant by two crit shots with this bow that's how we become radiant and then with this landing rapid precision hits emits a severing burst so we can become radiant and then rapidly hit them with this and it's severed that's a void or that's a stasis a stasis geez louise a strand debuff uh which is ties into this uh while radiant deal increased weapon damage to combatants affected by strand and stasis debuff it's, I don't even know. It's like a 33% increase or something. Like, it's kind of nuts. The Revision Zero targeting data shots do like 32K. While Radiant, they'll do like 43K. It's kind of nice. Um, but I would have those. And then if I want to apply Scorch to somebody, then I can by using the bow. I'm not really going to do that, but... There's not much on this for what we're using. Uh, obviously, if I was running like a strand bow, like Wish Keeper, I'd run Unraveling Orms and Horde Shuffle. But because I'm not using a void or a strand weapon, I keep saying void. Because I'm not using a strand weapon, it kind of makes it difficult to do a lot of things in there. Your armor, you want to max out your resilience first. Um, Honestly, your recovery second, but I am okay with how my recovery is. So I'd rather discipline. I'd rather get my grenade back faster. Um, I like using the grenade. On the helmet, we've got heavy ammo finder and kinetic siphon. That's because we are going to be using revision zero most of the time. 
on the gloves we've got double focusing strike which grant which grants you class ability when you cause damage with the powered melee attack and then kinetic loader that's to reload this faster on the chest piece the most is very important single arc double solar that's what i have found to work uh, there's not too many things that are void there are quite a few things that are void i will say but you can kind of easily uh you know dip out of the way of them swarmers our exotic We've got Orbs of Restoration. Uh, it grants a small amount of energy to ability with the least energy. Void Scavenger, so that way we pick up more ammo for Doom Petitioner. And then Recuperation, so that way when we pick up an orb, it uh, replenishes some health. And then on to the Bond, uh, we've got Double Outreach, which is reduced melee cooldown when using our class ability. So melees can give us our class ability back. Class ability can give us our melees back faster, not all the way but just it'll help us get it back faster and then distribution all ability cooldowns when using your class ability in your targets um i want to do this because a lot of times i'd find myself being kind of low needing to use my rift and there being combatants close by and so this will kind of help me get a lot of stuff back if i need it um let's go ahead and jump straight into it i'm going to try and do this as efficiently as possible do this in one take get it done this entire gm is just going to be spawning him in backing up spawning him in backing up and i'll try to explain it as best i can throughout this entire series or throughout this entire video on what happens when and what you can expect to happen and so on and so forth let's get into this at the beginning here there's going to be a bus right in front of you you can just kind of do this entire encounter behind this bus right here. There's two sections of encounters that you can do that to, uh, i.e. the using the bus thing. Taking her spawn in now. He's already shielded by this guy. These void uh, Axiom darts, try and take them out. They are like public enemy number one. If they get in the bus, don't worry, back up because then they won't escape the bus you can just yeah you can just back up and take them out try and get that shieldy boy out of the way going to be uh, a threadling. can't believe that I didn't take that out. All right. If they start coming towards me, that means there's nothing else up there. Go ahead and move this forward at 18%. There'll be a drop ship that comes in. When the drop ship comes in, we're going to go up here on that platform. This entire GM. Spawn them in, move them back. Spawn them in, move back. Spawn them in, just rinse and repeat.
Wait for another stun. If the Taken don't automatically spawn in, it's because there's a Warby somewhere. Dude, I'm telling you, those solar, that's the reason why we're running double solar resistance on here is because we are running double solar, yeah is because of those the taken firebolt eye things those hmm. you can use the environment like i'm doing too sometimes to stop incoming shots from hitting you Play smart. just plink and plink and plink and plink and plink like so your health just depletes super fast all right i think we're good now move this forward once the taken are taken out is that ammo that's a Oops, lot of wrong points. button it yep. is. cool i got two bricks of ammo when it gets to about the corner here, I'll tell you an exact percent. I don't exactly remember when it starts turning. I know the drop pods come down. And how much has this been? Sixty-two percent. It's being tested right now by you. Of course. Yep. About sixty-two percent. Once you take out the champion, there will be some taken that spawn in, but of course they're not going to fight each other. Why would they do that? The enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? It's more of those Axiom darts. Got to be careful about those. They will absolutely ruin your run through. Taken's taken out. We can get to the end. This thing can give you a little bit of a boost. If you stand on the left side, like in this quadrant of the circle, and you look here towards like the left side of this cloth, you don't want to go too far right because there's that ball, that bag of bombs or whatever the heck it is. You want to aim here and you can grapple right. way too early on the jump that is my fault it's actually working. usually you can go a lot farther but nothing to worry about all right i mistimed it this encounter don't leave this building you can do the entire encounter from the comfort of this building
wish you could take champions out like this. Like they die to fall damage or something. Hashtag add fall damage to champions in Destiny 2. We'll work on it. Same thing here. If they're the taken, don't immediately spawn in. It's because there is a war beast somewhere. There is a war beast somewhere. Hopefully the Settlings will, or not. Usually he likes to be over in the corner on the left over here. I won't take him out immediately. There he is. Let me get back to a little bit of safety here. Because right as soon as I take him out, there are going to be taken that spawn in. As long as we stay up against this left uh, wall, this guy's Axiom darts, well now they will because he's right in front of me. But as long as this guy stays to the left, his Axiom darts won't bother you. Alright, that's the entire encounter. Up next, uh, we're going to move... Uh oh. Well, we'll get more. We're going to move uh, the splinter forward a little bit when it pops the wall. Shortly after it pops the wall, there'll be two, uh, two Cabal drop ships that can land in three different locations. We're going to go over here. Not quite yet. All right, we're going to super the one that has the most of them. All right, if you stand behind these trees on this, like, on this side of the road right here, they'll never shoot at you. The people up here will never shoot at you. Just kind of a, kind of a good thing sometimes. Did I just take out that scorpion? Or did I take out a different scorpion? I think I might have taken out a different scorpion. There's another turret there. There's invisible, semi-invisible blight here, so be careful about that. All right. There might be something over there. All right, now the champion has to come over here. Good. The champion's coming. All right. We can use that same technique. Stay behind the trees over here. The only thing you really have to worry about coming at you are the Axiom darts. So, pretty good. Pretty good time. Like I said, this might not be the fastest way to do this, but it is definitely one of the safer ways to do it.
if this tangles start coming towards me, then there's nothing over there. If that tangle, oh, tangles just kind of going to wherever it wants to go. All right, so now that the, those those taken have been taken out, we can come back to the splinter. When the splinter gets to 64%, we're gonna get off of it and get behind that bus right there. It's, this is another spot that there is, this is the other spot that there is a bus that we can hide behind. For this next eyeball uh, you know, encounter, we're gonna go up here on the balcony. We're gonna try it out. Hopefully it'll work. I've completed it being down low on the left before and up there. I gotta get ready to get off. Three, two, one, now. And the shieldy boys. I want to try and take out as much of these with my weapon because with heavy ammo reserves, this next fight will be very nice with enough heavy ammo. Alright, we just keep on keeping on here with the damage. I want to make sure that they can't get their shields back. That guy got his shields back. Right, now, Splinter gets to 86%. There'll be the guys over here that spawn in, as well as the barrier and guy over here that spawn in. Uh, we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to spawn them in, back them up, draw the aggro of the barrier, kill the barrier, and then take out everything else. 86, we're going to back up. Get the aggro of that guy. They won't come back here, they'll just kind of run away. This guy, however, will chase you. The reason why I say this thing only does, this thing does 40k damage or 30k damage a shot is because it's damage to this guy, to this eyeball boss. Alright, um, when we spawn in this guy, I'm going to super and then back up. Uh, and then we're going to go up there and I'll tell you when we get back there, I'll tell you how to, how to get up there. 96% is when this guy spawns in. This is the hardest encounter in the game, or in the GM. Alright, so... Don't use your grenade coming back here. There are spots back here that you can go without taking any damage. Just relax. Aim your grapple a little bit above that, and it'll put you right in there. A lot of the time, sometimes you might have to grapple. Hopefully, hopefully, the boss will slowly move his way this way like he normally does, and we'll be able to take him out. There he is. I was like, I'm waiting on the tentacles. I'm going to use uh, Doom Petitioner first. We're just going to run out of ammo on it. He can't hit you up here. He hits these great things in front of you. Also, rapid precision hits makes him severed, so he outputs more damage, or he outputs less damage, excuse me. So if he does end up hitting you like that, it's not going to one-shot you. Every quarter of his health, there will be some wizards that spawn in. They'll kind of come down here and cause issues. I usually like to save four rounds in this for both of them. So that's usually what I'm, that's what that is what I'm going to do. 
speaking of which, they are spawned in now. There's one. He's down. And we've got one more. Right there. All right, both of the wizards are taken out. I'm just going to save that one round just in case if I need it for some reason. All right, now we can go down here. He still thinks I'm up there. We can go down here. We got to take out the little balls. There's one there. Hopefully he didn't see me. He did see me. All right. And now I'm going to sit over here. Regen my health. We can get the last ball from up there. We can go behind the the bus here there's a spot back here that doesn't have any blight and then there's a spot up there that doesn't have any blight don't get too close to this wall because it will kill you all right so we go over here a little bit he's over here i'm gonna do something not so smart which is to try and take out that try and take out that uh that blight orb we need to take out that last orb in order to make him damageable again. Mm, there is... I got it. It gave me one. Better than nothing, I'd say. Um, Let's see here. Can I take it out from somewhere back here? It's right there. And of course there's glass in the bus that I can't shoot through. So he's gonna move farther to the right. I don't want him to go too far. All right, it has been taken out. Now, I know I just used my grenade. We're good, we're chilling. Just, we need to play safe. Hopefully the boss, once again, hopefully the boss will start moving over to the left and he won't stay over there on the right. He is moving left because his shots are coming around that more. See how they're not hitting it now? They're going farther. He is coming left. There he is. All right, so let's not give him too much information on where we are. I could go ahead and use, you know, I could do damage and get my grenade back, but this is not the time for that. My grenade's almost back already. This is why I like to have 100 discipline. All right, we're back. A little bit above it we go up here and then we grapple up and we are good get back here to the left we've got half of a bar of his health left until more of those night spawn or those uh wizards spawn in Now he's taken out. Now we wait. Wait for him to blow up. We wait for everything to despawn. Then we go down there. 
Very nice. See any more? Thought I saw some over there. All right. Now we just keep going. This next part. Don't go through the door until you destroy the blight on the door. After that, just stay on this side of the door. Don't go in there yet. You don't have to. I'm going to do this. Do that I'm gonna do a bunch of this stuff get a bunch of my magic going wait for that grenade to blow up I'm not gonna die There's a yellow bar down here that you really need to be careful of because he has an arc shotgun that just does... It's that guy, this guy right here. With the stasis... Or the stasis, jeez Louise. The strand shield. Probably shouldn't have done that, but hey, you know what? When in Rome. The reason why I probably shouldn't have done that is because now I have nothing for all the guys down there. And I kind of just have to take them out one at a time. Which is doable. It's possible. Alright. Play it smart. Honestly, don't care if he reshields. Can I shoot that? I can. And Dunzo. I think that's everything else. Usually, I'd super all these guys down here, but. I decided to super those guys up there because they were annoying me. Two yellow bars right here to the left. Don't push out too far uh, because the thresher will spawn in and then you got to deal with people and a thresher. After severing these guys, they're like big babies. Here, the thresher spawn into. Spawn in the thresher. There he is. As long as he doesn't see you, he shouldn't shoot. 
This is going to take, honestly, forever. So I'm just going to kind of edit this to where it's every bow shot. These rockets can, like, two shots. We're gonna do that twice, by the way, because there are two sets of threshers. All of my melees just hit that one phalanx with the shield up. There's the thresher. He's already shot some of his shots, so just wait a second. All right, let it begin again. Holy guacamole, Batman. All right, now. I need another targeting data so I can just lay into him. I say that while I don't really need to lay into them. All right, wait for this to blow up. We're gonna drop down here. There's probably gonna be some scions. Thankfully, forget that there are multiple guys there. Careful, that's void. I'm more than likely just going to super these guys. Send the champion. I can deal with myself. Or not. All right, it's build targeting data. I'm gonna take this guy out really quick. Don't have to build targeting data, I just want to. All right, wait for this thing to blow up. Now we go. Some ammo there. All right. Tormentor skip. Uh, we're going to go up there. We're going to grapple up towards that corner. We're going to walk in front of these cables right here. It's going to be pitch black up there. We're not going to be able to sit, see anything. I'm going to get up there, and then I'm going to cut till I have my grenade back. Because I don't like making the jump from here to there without my grenade just in case. So we'll start off up here. Jump up here. And then I will see you. Hey, it's not dark. I'll see you in a little bit once I have my grenade back. Still. All right, here we are about to get our grenade back. Boom. All right, we can jump up over here. Oh, my Lanta. All right, that's always like a pucker factor of 100 for me. 
is that right there. Um, now, the little thing that normally spawns in, the little pyramid thing that spawns in, in the middle of the room, is not going to be there when you do this skip. You'll have to go up here the normal way, and then come up here, and now it'll spawn in. Just don't touch it. Just wait. All right, we're going to jump up here on this generator thing. We're going to jump up here onto these cables. We're going to jump up here onto this ledge. I like to go to the hooky thing. If you've got your your grapple, you can kind of make it up there, but I'm going to do it the safe way. You come up here. All right. Not quite the safe way, but it's all right. We will do it again. Well, it is the safe way. I just overdid my W key a little bit. All right, I don't have my grapple grenade, so we're gonna have to be very careful. Once you jump up here, if you jump straight up, you're gonna hit your head, so you kinda have to jump out left a little bit, and then up here, you can land on this one. You can jump to this crack, and you can go all the way over here. You can land on this roof and walk across it. I just chose to go over here. My preferred point to do damage most of the time is over here. The knights that spawn on top of these generators, they are your biggest enemy, and it's their their fire attack, their eyeball fire attack. If they put it on the ground anywhere near you, it will hurt you, so just move. That's going to be the biggest thing. Get out of the way, put down a healing thing, and hope they didn't see you move. And darkness can encroach all at once uh, because you don't get any revives anyway when you're doing a solo. This is this whole encounter, hoping that nothing throws anything up here where you are. Always you can get good damage in like that. Alright, the rest is going to be with Revision Zero. The knights are spawned in now. I really have to be careful. The knight over there on the right doesn't seem like he's seen me yet, so that's a good thing. I don't want to use my healing pad just yet because I don't want to... Um, I don't want to get any unwelcomed attacks on me and need my healing thing and not have it. So this is kind of a... Uh, you need to use it when you really need to use it, not whenever you want to use it.
Wish you could still, like, shoot above his shield there. I still hear, see your head, bud. Ah. Almost done. There's no champions or anything in here, so you don't have to worry about doing that. Like, you'll still get platinum rewards. Now we are done. There we go. That is how you solo the GM Lake of Shadows. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up. If you think somebody else would enjoy this video or you think it would help them, make sure you share this with them. Uh, and always don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that way, uh, you know, it kind of shows me your support, but also, you know, it, it it helps out a lot. It really does. All right. I appreciate you all very much. Let's take a look at this end thing real quick. 187 kills, 187,000 score. Um not too shabby. Let's take a look at the rolls on the weapons that I got. Shoot to loot explosive payload. Great. Perpetual motion is decent, but I would prefer Archer's Tempo. I might keep this one. Uh, I don't care about stability. Holy accuracy. Um, with an accuracy masterwork, you can get it over 100. I am I might hold on to this bow. Honestly, I have quite a few of them. Um, but that's definitely one that I want to hold on to. And then I already have this role, Archer's Tempo Shoot to Loot with Incandescent for the lesser, uh, the non-GM ones that bows, you know, are really fun using them in. Uh, but yeah, anyway, again, thank you all for liking, commenting, and subscribing. If you want to see more different, uh, you know, builds that doing this or anything like that, I finally got my, my Conqueror title. So that way I can now do any gm that we can do which will be fun all right but anyway have a great have a great night day whatever it is and i'll talk to you all in the next one